everybody! This week I'm going to show you how to make a basket out of magazines and things that you would throw away. So that makes these baskets free. <laughs> If you follow me on Chris Nation, you will know that I am turning my office into a craft room. In order to organize all of my crafting materials, I wanted to use baskets. But when I looked in the sales papers, I was shocked to see how much just one basket would cost. That is when I decided to make my own baskets out of the magazines that were cluttering up my craft room. This was the perfect solution to clean up the clutter, and I was saving money by using things that I already had. I can also customize the baskets to fit the shelves and the materials that go into the baskets. If you are not a magazine collector like I am, and you need magazines to make your own baskets, go to your local library. Most libraries will give their outdated magazines to a good home for free. As a side note, you can also make the baskets out of copy paper, preferably used, and newspapers. I will leave a list of the things that you will need to make this project down below. Let's grab a few magazines and a pair of scissors so we can get started. To make cutting easier, flip through the pages of your magazine and rip out all the little cards and things that you can't use. Now let's rip out the pages, a few pages at a time, to make cutting easier. Cut the edge that keeps the pages stuck together off. Then loosely fold your pages over like this, so that you can find the center and then cut the pages in half. It doesn't have to be perfect, just cut them as straight as you can. My favorite glue to use for rolling my pages is glue sticks. I have seen it done with school glue. But glue sticks, to me, are less messy and it holds them together great. I use a small chopstick to roll the pages. To protect my table from getting glue on it, I use the cover of the magazine. Now get one of the cut pages and put glue on the corner. I also put a couple of lines of glue in the middle like this to help it stick together tightly as I roll it. Put the stick at the opposite end from the glued corner and tightly roll the page on the stick. Roll them at an angle like this. Press the glued corner down and then pull the stick out of the middle. I made sure that I rolled plenty of pages before I started putting my basket together. I want you to notice that each tube is rolled slightly larger on one side than it is on the other. You want them to be like that because you will be connecting the tubes later on. I actually found it relaxing to do and it was easy to roll the pages on a fold up table while I was watching TV. Before cutting the bottom of the basket, find a box that would be the perfect base size to fit on the shelf. We will be using this box as a guide. To hold up the top flaps, I taped each of the corners. I used a cereal box for the bottom of the basket, but you can use any kind of cardboard that you have handy for the bottom. Just make sure that you cut it slightly bigger than your guide box. You will need two cardboard pieces for the bottom. Here is the first basket that I made. I did not use a box as a guide and you can see that the sides didn't turn out as straight as my other baskets which is okay with me, but that is why I'm showing you how to use a box as a guide, and it makes it easier. For this tall basket, I started out using the box as a guide, and when my weaving got to the top of the box, I slid the box out and continued weaving up until it was as high as I wanted it. I made sure that I was extra careful to keep my weaving straight. <laughs> Let's prepare the bottom of our basket by gluing some of the rolled up pages evenly around the edges. I use my glue gun for this. Glue them onto the print side. You can measure where you want to place each spoke and mark it with a pen if you want to, but I don't worry about those little things. I simply eyeball it. The closer you put your spokes, the tighter the weave will be. After gluing each spoke onto the cardboard, flatten them between your fingers like this. 
you want your spokes flat. Always make sure you have an odd number of spokes. This will balance your weave and allow each row to alternate over and under on the spokes. After all the spokes are in place, squeeze the school glue generously around on the cardboard like this. I use a little hot glue also so that I am sure that the lid won't slide around while I am weaving. Now set the lid on it so that it is evenly lined up to the bottom with the print side down and then press it down. This is how we connect the tubes so that we can have a long piece to weave over and under each spoke. I use glue because I wanted to be sure that they won't come apart. And of course, I use hot glue because I don't want to wait for it to dry. Test each piece to see how they fit together before putting a dab of glue into the tip of the tube. Once the tubes are glued together, pinch it together between your fingers and flatten the tube. But do not flatten it all the way to the end because you will need the hole open so that you can connect the next piece. I like to connect enough of them together to form a long piece so that I have enough to finish my basket. Tuck and glue your long piece between your cardboard pieces at the corner. Set your guide box in the center of your basket. Clothespins are your best friend while weaving your basket. Use the clothespins to pin up every other spoke on your first side. Now pull your long piece along the bottom edge like this. Next you will pick up the spokes that are on the table and use the clothespins to hold them in place. The long weave piece will hold the under spokes in place, so just move the clothespins over to the spokes that are in the front of the long piece so that they don't fall down. Continue doing this all the way around the basket. Once you get the hang of it, it will go fast and you will discover how much you love to weave baskets. The second row should be the opposite of the first row's weave. If you miss a spoke, your weave will not be opposite or you may have miscounted the spokes and made it an even number. If this happens, don't panic. Just carefully look over your weave to find the mistake and fix it. The important thing is to have fun with it. When you get to the top of the guide box, it is time to take the box out of your basket. Take all of your clothespins off of the top. Now gently wiggle the box out of the basket like this. Be patient, it should slide right out once you get it about halfway. Carefully and gently pull up on your spokes if you need to and push your weave so that it is tight again. Then use your clothespins to hold the weave in place. If you want a taller basket, simply add tubes to the tops of the existing spokes like this. Don't forget your dab of glue. To end our baskets, we will fold the ends over and cut them under the next over weave on that side. That will be the third row down. Then tuck them under. I do the front tucks first and then I turn the basket on its side and measure, cut, and tuck those ends last. After everything is tucked, I use my school glue and put a drop under each tuck like this. I painted only one of my baskets so far, and I haven't decided if I want to paint the rest of them. But the paint does make the basket stiffer, and it kind of gives it a more finished look. Do you like them painted, or do you like them left the way they are? What do you like best? I still can't decide. <laughs> I use leftover wall paint to paint my basket, but you can probably use acrylics, spray paint, or whatever you have handy. Because I need to know what is inside each of the baskets on the shelves, I flattened a tube and folded two folds in the tube to create three sides. Put a bit of glue in the fold. Now glue the very outside edges so that you are able to slide an index card into it. Cut to size, then write what is in the basket on the card. Here are some homemade crafts that were shared by viewers.
much for sharing your crafts with us. Visit our Easy Me World Facebook page where you can post pictures of your latest crafts. And your crafts can get featured in a video too. That way you can encourage and inspire others also. I hope you enjoyed watching me make a basket and that it encourages you to make one too. Hit that thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. And feel free to leave your feedback and some helpful tips that you may have to make this project even easier. If you would like to keep up with my craft room updates or see what other creative things are going on around our house, check out Crisp Nation. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you next time with another craft. Bye! <laughs>